cats with Kendra and Kat. Just a couple of girls talk about this and that. Get familiar with Blue and the Charmed Ones too. Charm Chats. A holiday hello to you. <laughs> Welcome to Charm Chats with Kendra and Kat. A holiday hello. A holiday hello. A holiday hello. Hello. Yeah. I don't know if... I think this is going to come on after the holiday, but you know. So? It's fine. I don't control when you release them. It's true. You do not. It's very, very true. Plus, we don't know that it's not a holiday when we release this. There are so many holidays. There are so many holidays. So, so many. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we are at episode 404. Episode not found. Nope, sorry. We found it. We We just wish we'd lost it. Um, Yeah. Well, someone lost it. (laughs) It's called Enter the Demon. It was aired on October 18th, 2001. The title is a play on Enter the Dragon, which was a Bruce Lee movie from 1973. Was that the one where he killed Chuck Norris or the the opposite happened? I do not know. Um, Whatever. I honestly... Do not know. I honestly don't care. Yeah. It's a martial arts movie, and I'm not really yeah. a big fan of those. You've seen Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, no, though. Neither is Blue. No, I've never actually watched that. Oh, you should. It's beautiful. I've... Michelle Yeoh is great. I've and seen the sequel's some not Jackie Chan either. movies, but that's about it. Well, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is less of a martial arts movie and more of, like, a cultural mood piece. Okay. Um... The wire work is excellent. Very artistic. The story's great. Michelle Yeoh is... Mwah. Chef's kiss. Yes. Good to know. And the sequel, though in English, is not bad. Hmm. Also good to know. Mm-hmm. I will add it to my ever-growing list of things to watch. And uh, it was released around the same time, either 2000, 2001, I want to say. And I can see some influence... In this episode. Okay. Like, the wire work they do in here is very Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Okay. Good to know. Um, but yeah, so the, the title is a play on Enter the Dragon, and in fact, the very first line of the episode from Cole is a line that Bruce Lee says in the movie. Of course. When you see me expand, you contract. If I contract, you expand. Apparently, they just stole that wholeheartedly. Yeah. Yeah. So let's start, shall we? Mm-hmm. Right on into it. We open up. We are in the basement at the manor. Phoebe mm-hmm. and Cole are there sparring. Yep. Practicing their fighting skills. Yeah. Cole is topless with black sweatpants and very sweaty. Yes. Phoebe is in gray sweatpants that kind of pucker. I think she rolled the waistband or something. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, with a pink sports bra that has white straps and ties it a bow at the back. Very, because very small white straps, too. Like, there's not a whole lot of support in that thing. Yeah, no. Not it's, even remotely. It's made to look pretty. Yeah. Her hair is pulled back into a high, tight ponytail. She's got, like, a black sweatband on her head. And she's got some protection wraps on her arms that are taped onto her arms. Cole kicks her in the stomach. And they stop, and this is when he says the line from Enter the Dragon, and then they continue fighting, and he flips her on her back. And then he sits on top of her. She giggles and jokes about him just having to ask to be on top. Mm -hmm. And then we hear another giggle from the back. Yep, because Paige is watching from the stairs. Yeah. She is in a pink hoodie over a white top and black pants, and her hair is down, and and the hoodie is zipped up so we can't actually see the top. And it's it's got some, like, cabling... On the front. Mm -hmm. Phoebe slaps Cole's leg and he gets off of her. She walks over to Paige and asks why she's downstairs since she's supposed to be studying for Piper's quiz. Yeah. Paige says she was hoping to get in a fight with the demon. And Phoebe's like, Piper takes her witchcraft quizzes very seriously. Asks her what the subject is. And Paige goes, potions. And Phoebe says, ew. Ew. Yeah. Neither of them seem to be very happy about potion basics. Yeah. Cole comes up behind Phoebe, and she kind of sighs at him, and he walks away. And Phoebe tells Paige that they had to learn the hard way, and it took too long, so they need her to learn faster, because their lives may depend on it. Paige concedes, stands up, 
hopes the fun stuff will start soon, and then turns and goes back up the stairs. Phoebe turns back to Cole, who says they should get back to training. She says he was gone for a week and places her hands on his chest, mentioning how she's been so lonely without him. And they are both very shiny. Yeah. With spritz bottle. Mm Mm-hmm. He reminds her that the source needs them dead because all sorts of evil have started to gang up on him to try and take his spot, which made me laugh because he's the source of all evil and yet people want to steal his position. Because that's apparently something that can be done. Yeah. Just saying. So, because these evil entities are trying to get rid of him, he needs to get rid of the charmed one so that he can survive. Because it... Well, he needs to establish dominance, I guess. Yeah. So it's more like a lion pride than a company or whatever. Yeah. Anyway, that means the girls need to be prepared. Cole grabs a sword from a nearby rack. Yeah, because they have, you know, just lining the walls, nunchucks and swords. Just, you know. Uh Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know, basement stuff. Yeah. Yeah. (sighs) Phoebe's like, uh, is he gonna sword fight me? Yeah. And he, and Cole says, well, this will teach you confidence. And he tosses her a sword in its scabbard. Yeah. He grabs one of his own, leaving the scabbard attached to the wall. Yeah. Which I thought was very funny. Yeah. And says, then, yeah, he says yeah. that training comes before everything, including their love life. And then he swings the sword at her. She ducks, yelling, and he hits the brick pillar. And as she goes to draw her sword, we jump over to a man wearing gray ninja-esque clothing. No, it was, it was like, it was a Chinese style shirt. Yeah. Like with the, with the uh, button rope closure thing. Yeah. And the Mandarin collar. Yeah. Um, but I couldn't tell that at, at the time because, you know. know, it was covered by a, a mask covering his face. The, what I lovingly called the black ninja type mask to go with the ninja type clothes. <laughs> um, and he pulls out a katana, which is a Japanese sword. Yep. Just putting that out there. Mm-hmm. He is standing in some foliage. Yeah, and we see a, a POV from him in, in this the foliage. very thin bush. Yeah. There's an older man wearing some gray robes with, like, a red and gold trim over a white, like, shirt tunic thingy. Mm-hmm. Uh, kneeling in front of a statue. Which I believe was supposed to be Buddha. I was not paying that much attention. Probably. Yeah. Anyway, masked dude quietly runs around these bushes across some rocks and stands a few feet behind the older man who has sensed his arrival but pretends not to. The masked man starts creeping toward the older man when a masked woman in all black jumps down from above and draws her katana. Yep. They begin to fight. Old dude stands up to watch them. They break a bunch of shit as they go at it. Mm-hmm. And then she, un- she like, stabs the dude in the shoulder and then unmasks him mm-hmm. just as the old guy comes up. Now, we learn that the the masked dude guy was is named Yenlo. The woman is An Ling. And the old dude is her father, who does not have a name. He is credited as Zen Master mm-hmm. in IMDb. So even though both of the men are very recognizable, let's go ladies first, because there's not a lot to tell about her. Mm-hmm. An Ling is played by Jian Chin. It's either Jian or Jean. It's J-E-A-N-N-E, and Chin has two N's. Mm -hmm. She was born in California, has 42 acting credits between 1994 and 2017. That's it. That's all we get. Zen Master is played by the prolific James Hong. Mm Mm-hmm. He's been in fucking everything. He was born in 1929 in Minneapolis. Um, He is our most prolific guest star. Yeah. He's been acting since 1954 and has 431 credits so, so far. far. Uh, yeah. He was, he played Jack Black's father in Kung Fu Panda. Mm-hmm. That little goose. He was that little goose. Okay. All right. Um, he, I'm pretty sure he's been on Avatar The Last Airbender. He like had a bit part. Uh, he auditioned for Sulu in the original Star Trek. Yeah. He did not get it. George Takei did. Correct. And then George Takei was also on Avatar The Last Airbender as a bit part. Yep. Um, 
And fun fact, so was their next guy. Yes. Yen Lo is played by Daniel Day Kim. He was born in 1968 in Pusan, South Korea. Mm -hmm. He has 76 acting credits so far, starting back in 1991. He played Gavin Park in 12 episodes of Angel, 2001 to 2003. Was Tom Baker, which I thought was very funny, in 11 episodes of 24, back in 2003-2004. But most people will probably know him as either... Jin Su Kwan from his 116 episodes of Lost, or as Chin Ho Kelly from the 2010 reboot of Hawaii Five O. Yeah, and uh, not only was he in Avatar: Last Airbender, he also was the voice of a pretty prominent first season character from Legend of Korra. Okay, I still haven't finished Avatar, so I had definitely I know, I know. haven't. We gone need to on work Korra. on that with you. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, An Ling removes her mask, which somehow lets all of her hair down, uh, yeah. yells at Yen Lo about being ungrateful. He's apparently pissy that she got promoted over him. Um, to replace her father. Yeah, to replace her father. Like, Zen yeah. Master is not a hereditary title. It's a position. Yeah. Um, and the Zen Master says that Yen Lo has disgraced himself and the monastery, and then tells him to leave and never come back. Yen Lo, of course, says that he's going to kill them both, and he goes to attack on Ling. She spins around and stabs him in the gut with her katana, which then has zero blood once it's removed from his stomach. Yeah, katana is clean when she pulls uh -huh. it out. He says that he's just getting started and then jumps into what looks to be a large birdbath. With a bunch of rocks in the bottom. Yep, and he disappears, and we go to the opening credits. Now, their fight had, again, like, some nice wire work, mm -hmm. just like Crouching Tiger. I did Dragon, I did enjoy how she jumped backwards into a tree. Yeah, that was cool. That was quite nice. It was very nice. Yeah, Good you, balance. You could tell that it was and absolutely the, a reverse shot. And the camera but, work. No, 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 I don't think it was. Mm, I think it was. No, I think it was wire work. They just didn't have to go far. Um, I don't know. Either way, uh... It would make more sense for this genre of episode if it were a wire work, is what I'm saying. I guess so. But, like, the camera angles they were working with were also a little bit different. They, like, tried to go from, like, different areas, mm -hmm. and they tried to move it around a lot more. And I don't think it was 100% effective, but they were trying to emulate a certain style Yeah, that was very popular at the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was... It was an interesting way of doing things. Yeah. And I, I didn't dislike it. That's fair. Yeah. They went for it. They committed. At they least. did. They did. So we find by the opening credits that there's no Daryl this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, we come back to the manor. We're now in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Piper and Paige are sitting at the kitchen table, which is covered in shit ton of bottles and jars. Yeah. All sorts of stuff. Piper is in a long sleeve black shirt and tan pants with that little diamond necklace, and her hair is down. And for the first time, she's wearing reading glasses. Mm hmm. It's the first time we've ever seen her with glasses. Yep. And she didn't have to have an existential crisis about it, like Phoebe. Yeah. Paige has removed her pink hoodie so that we can see that she is wearing no bra under her white tank top that has a ruffle down the center. That has black buttons down the ruffle, along with black suspenders. That are doing nothing, nothing to yeah. hold it up. Now, for any British or Australian listeners, those would be black braces. Mm -hmm. Not to be confused, because a suspender in, in those countries uh, is more of a garter belt. Yeah. Than, I gathered. Than, yeah. Just like how they say pants when we say underwear. Correct. And that leads to some very interesting confusions. Yeah. Also, I, fanny. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Piper is asking a question about preserving unused sea slugs while Paige sucks on a lollipop. A square lollipop. And doesn't seem to be taking this nearly as seriously as Piper is. The answer is apparently freeze-dry them, which I guessed. Yep, in case uh, anyone was wondering. Yeah. Piper reminds Paige, this isn't like trig. You'll actually use it again. Yeah. If you fuck up a potion, innocent people might die. Now, trig is, of course, short for trigonometry. That is the branch of mathematics that studies the relationships involving lengths and angles of triangles. I never took trig. Ever. I was okay at trig. I was better at geometry. 
I never got past algebra. I never needed it, so I never took it. Because fuck math. Yeah. I almost didn't get past algebra. And they're like, well, technically you passed the class because you did all of the homework. So here, go into geometry. Go into honors geometry. And I'm like, shit, everything makes sense now because I can see pictures. There you go. They never fucking did that in my middle school algebra classes. Yeah. Anyway, Piper asked Paige if she studied at all. Paige is like, I tried to, but then a friend came over. We went out to a club. Piper tells her to study that night instead. But Paige says that she's meeting a guy at the manor and they're going out. Piper's like, why the manor? Uh, Because the manor is slightly more impressive than Paige's apartment. And apparently she's taking out her boss's son and she really wants to make an impression yeah piper of course thinks the page has her priorities screwed but, but she's like no no i swear this is for the job yeah totally for the job yeah piper reminds her that they could be attacked at literally any moment so she needs to learn the whole witchcraft thing page asks why she's stuck reading when phoebe gets to quote body slam sweaty demons unquote And Piper reminds her that Phoebe has been doing this a lot longer than Paige has, and and she'll get a big sweaty demon of her own someday. You promise? Yeah. Anyway, Piper gets up and picks up an umbrella and keys, saying she needs to go to Chinatown to get some herbs. Paige jumps up with her lollipop and asks if she can go and get her nails done. Because that's a thing. Piper tells her to work on her potions and goes to grab her coat. Paige stands up, acting just a little bit childish, possibly due to the lollipop in her mouth. Piper says that she dislikes being the whole big sister. She she didn't like getting stuck with this big sister gig, but decides to lean into it and tells Paige that she should get rid of her lollipop habit or it'll rot her teeth. And then Piper leaves and Paige sticks the lollipop back in her mouth. Rolling her eyes as she does. Yeah. I don't understand why this lollipop thing is a thing, except, oh wait, there is a reason for it. Most annoying of reasons, Mm -hmm. which will all make sense soon enough. Mm. We cut down to the basement, where Phoebe and Cole are still sword fighting. Cole pushes her with his leg, and she sits on the stairs, grabbing her ankle, saying she thinks she's twisted it. He tells her to get up, she asks for a time out... And he says that the source wouldn't give her one when she asked for one and reminds her that demons worship strength and power. Yeah, he tells her to channel all of her energy, including pain, into her strength. She struggles to get up. He goes to help her, but she's like, no, I can do it. Because apparently now she's, you know. <sighs> We're doing like weird, ineffectual emotional roller coasters right here. Yeah, ineffectual is the proper word because it just seems They're also forced and minuscule. He says that he doesn't want anything to happen to her. She rests her head on his chest for a moment, and they are all so sweaty that I'm just like, this is gross, whatever. No, it's operatic. That's what that is. Is that the the issue? No, I mean... Trying to be an opera? Yeah. Doesn't everybody die in an opera? No, this is very operatic. Like, the push and the pull, and like, you're changing, you're you're changing your opinion every five goddamn seconds. Mm, Maybe. It's just like, in an opera... It makes sense, and it's cheesy, sure, but it's part of the context of opera. When you see it on a TV show, you're like, ugh, can we not? Yeah. She rests her head on his chest, on his sweaty, sweaty chest for a moment, and then puts the blade of her sword up to his chest. And kind of pushes him away with it. Yeah. Just a little bit. Just a titch. She limps a little bit, which is their way of saying she really did twist her ankle limping tiny tiny bit she says she's ready to continue and they go back to sword fighting back at the monastery on ling has removed her black and is now in white red and gold and she's talking to her father about staying to protect him from yin lo he says you can't protect me only the dragon blade can stop him and gives her a note to take to some master quan somewhere she worries that Yen Lo will find him before she gets back, and he tells her that she'll know what to do when she becomes master, which right there is a bit of foreshadowing, because he's like, I know I'm going to die. You'll know what you're doing once I'm dead. Yeah. Which is a little bit morbid. Yeah. And she doesn't take it that way. No. Anyway, uh, he tells her that she didn't get her position due to nepotism, but mm-hmm. because she was the better student. Uh, and illustrated further because they were talking about how 
Yen Lo was like super selfish and he used all of the knowledge for his own gains. Yeah. He, very personal gain. He did things the evil way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, you didn't get this this promotion because you're my kid. You, yeah. You got it because you were actually a good person yeah. and deserved to get it. You're way better than that asshole. Yeah. He tells her to hurry up. She, she leaves. leaves. And we see Yen Lo's face appearing in that birdbath. Yeah. Kind of like he's... All like watery. Yeah. And, and like, it was one of those where like... I enjoyed that effect because they didn't just make his face just show up. They mm-hmm. made it look like he was actually in the water. Yeah. Like like he was standing underneath a skylight or something. Mm-hmm. And he's just looking up like he can actually see. But of course, the only thing he would see, we know, would be the tree that mm-hmm. he's under. Because he can't... See. But it, he... Like the way uh, Daniel A. Kim does it gives the impression like he can actually see to the sides of the birdbath. Yeah. We cut back to the manor. In the kitchen, where Paige is now working on a potion and channeling Emerald Lagasse. And uh, there's a tea towel right next to a burner. Yeah. This is not safe. And that's how you know that the thing's not actually on. Because sometimes on the show, they will have the burners on. This one, they did not. That that fucking kitchen island is the most cluttered I have ever seen it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's apparently making some potion. Like... Piper was quizzing her about potion ingredients and leaves and apparently told her to make some potions. Like, this is not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's also channeling Emma Lagasse, which yeah, I, she... I was annoyed by because, like, yeah. he has become such a caricature of himself with the bam, kick it up a notch. Rah, rah. Like, when he was first starting out, because I've, I've, I've watched him, him get more popular. I I remember mm-hmm. when he was not as popular as he is now. And he was not as obnoxious and loud and the whole bam thing didn't happen until like way later in his career. Yeah. And he just has he became a caricature of himself and he just yeah, I think me. his popularity has pretty much died down now. Oh yes. Because now everyone likes to rag on Guy Fieri, who was an excellent person. Yes. Guy Fieri, while he looks like a hot mess with that hair. He is an amazing human being. Mm-hmm. He really is. Anyway, Leah walks in wearing tan pants and a long sleeve blue collared shirt with the sleeves pushed up. Yeah. So for a moment, I thought he was in a polo shirt. And then I was like, wait, no, that has long sleeves. That is not a polo shirt. Yeah. He asks what she's doing. She's like, I'm preparing for the source. He and jokes like, about the source coming to dinner. Yeah. Uh, and she tells him that Piper has her mixing potions and then complains about Phoebe getting to do fighting stuff while she has to cook. Leo grabs a bottle of water out of the fridge and tells Paige that her sister's active powers took time to develop and that Phoebe's been studying martial arts for years. Paige wants a shortcut for magic, which Leo crushes her dreams on, and then he reminds her she's half white lighter, which means she's half pacifist, and she might never get a fighting power. He also then mentions that her potion is bubbling over. Which and it totally leaves. isn't. No, it was bubbling, but not bubbling over. I, I just love how he's like, your potion's bubbling over, and then he just walks away. <laughs> Like, all right, Leo, yeah. sure. Paige says that she'd like to know how to kick some serious ass like Phoebe. And then she grabs a handful of what a, looks a white like powder. salt. She previously called powdered toadstool. No, she didn't previously call it powdered toadstool. We don't learn that it's powdered toadstool until later. No, she said it earlier. She said it in that scene. She's like, and some powdered toadstool. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh, okay. Was that the, okay. Yeah, that's what she was doing the bam with. Okay. Yeah, and then, like, she'd previously been taking pictures of it, and she literally, like, just grabs an entire fucking handful and throws it into the pot, and a nice, like, puff of smoke goes in her face. She closes her eyes, and we see her fall out of frame very delicately, and then and then we see her land on the floor. Uh-huh. Like, one arm... She's lying on her she side. Does, she does what I call the movie collapse. Yeah, the movie collapse. Where it's the, you have to fall to the ground, but you have to do so in such a manner that you don't hurt yourself, but it still looks dramatic. And this is not looking dramatic exactly. Uh-uh. Because they cut to her, like, just getting to the floor. Yeah. And, and like, then her head lands on her arm, and her other arm is, like, in in her waist and whatnot. It, yeah. looks, it looks really manufactured. And then a bright... Light leaves her body and goes downward through the floor. We, we cut to the basement as Phoebe 
falls over from a blow from Cole, and we see the 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 sword go skittering. Mm-hmm. A and this is my favorite moment. A Phoebe shaped light leaves her body going upward, and the page shaped light enters Phoebe's body. And this is where this episode gets a little bit complex, a little complicated. And please bear with us. We're going to try not to be too confusing. And I'm going to stop every once in a while after after a, mo- a very confusing scene and just to make sure everyone's with us. Mm-hmm. So that if you're not, you can pause, go back, yeah, and re-listen. So basically, um, we are going to start with referring to the person inhabiting the body mm-hmm. as they are playing the body. Right. Unless they are in a scene by themselves. And we, we can then refer to them as, as just them. it is. Right. Yeah. So Paige, as Phoebe, yep. gets up and asks how she got in the basement. And Alyssa does a wonderful job of changing her voice ever so slightly to mimic Rose's portrayal of Paige. Yeah. Um, it's it. She does a really, really good job. It's just slightly a little more childish sounding. Yeah. Um, Which I think they were trying to set up with Paige with the lollipop. Yeah. So that's I get why where I she say, got it from. Right. That's why I say the lollipop thing, as annoying as it is, comes into play. Yeah. And it, it does make it, when when we get a little later into the episode where, where Alyssa has the lollipop, it makes sense because it's like, oh, right, that's our little cue to remember type yeah. thing. Anyway. Cole tells her to never drop her guard, goes to hand her a sword. And she and crawls away yeah, from him. She, like, runs away, hides behind no, the punching bag. No, she crawls. Bag. She's yeah, on she, all fours. Yeah, she crawls and then, like, hides behind the punching bag. And he asks Phoebe what's wrong with her. And Paige, in Phoebe's body, goes, what'd you call me? <laughs> yeah. Like, he, uh... Yeah, he thinks he hit her super hard but she can't remember her own name. And, and then, then Paige he, looks down to see Phoebe's boobs. It was... The best moment ever. Like, the way that Alyssa did this acting, where she just was like, uh, ooh. <laughs> like, that, that glance down and, and that realization of, like, these are not my tits. This is not my shirt. Fuck. Yeah. It was brilliant. She, of course, gasps. Cole asks if she's okay. She tries to play it off, tells him to wait. She goes to leave and he's like, there are no unscheduled breaks during training. And she's like, I'm doing stairs. Yeah, it was cute. It was very, very cute. So we cut up to the kitchen uh, where Phoebe, as Paige, mm-hmm. stands up with a groan. And then Paige, as Phoebe, comes in through the door. Yeah, she goes over to the other side of the counter. And Phoebe, in Paige's body, sees her body standing in front of her and gasps. <laughs> and then Paige is like, okay, so here's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> We get the typical, it was an accident type scene. Yeah, and Paige asks Phoebe not to tell Piper. She agrees not to. And then there's the joke about their boob sizes. Yeah, of the, this shirt is super tight. Yeah, but it looks good, you know. Yeah. Like, okay. Mm, And uh, Rose doesn't appear to be doing quite as much work as Alyssa is doing, acting more like the other character. Yeah, Rose, um, she does a good job of trying to be more mature, quote-unquote. Yeah, but it just like, comes off as being a little flat. It is, a, Yeah, it does feel a little flat. She's she's standing up straighter, too. Yeah. Um, so she does it much more in a, in a physical motion than she does in a vocal motion. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, Cole enters. He's added <laughs> a, a white long-sleeve zip-up thing. Yeah. Sweater? Yeah. It, it, okay, so... It's a long sleeve zip up that looks like it was a hoodie, but they removed the hoodie portion. Yeah. Because it doesn't really have a collar. It looks like it was like the hoodie was cut off. Yeah. Anyway, he asks if Phoebe is ready to get back to training. Phoebe, who is in Paige's body, immediately replies, but Cole's like, uh, not you. (laughs) I was talking to Phoebe. And Paige, who is in Phoebe's body, decides that she's, you know, totally keen to do the fighting thing. And she starts to go downstairs. Yeah. And then Phoebe, as Paige, stops them and says, oh, Phoebe needs to help me fix a potion that just blew up on me. Yeah. Cole asks if that's true, and they both kind of nod in agreement. But Paige, as Phoebe, kind of does a shrug. Yeah. 
He asked Phoebe why she asked him to train her if they're just wasting time. And, of course, Phoebe, as Paige, tries to, like, jump in and explain it to him. But he gets annoyed and tells her to stop. This is between me and Phoebe, he yeah. says. He then says if it's more important to help in the kitchen than it is to train, that she doesn't have what it takes to vanquish the source. And a little tells, unfair. I mean, a little she'll bit have her unfair. sisters with her, so. Yeah, just a little unfair. He then tells Phoebe to let him know when that changes and he shimmers out. And Phoebe threatens to perm Paige's hair if they don't fix this quickly. Which I think was my favorite moment in that entire <laughs> scene. It was like, if if we don't fix this, I'm perming your hair. Yeah. Like, that's the most beautiful threat. <laughs> yeah, but it only work if then, after that, they can't fix it in the next 24 hours. Yeah. Because as every Cosmo girl knows, you get that shit wet, it goes. Yes. Anyway, we cut to Piper (laughs) entering a shop in Chinatown. And Ling is there arguing with the shopkeeper, who gets no name, but is played by Jameson Yang. We've actually seen him before as the coroner in episode 205, the one where Prue becomes a man to defeat the succubus. Yep. So go back to that episode for all the info on him. Yeah. Anyway, the guy tells An Ling that the dagger she's asking for, which is shown up in a frame on the wall in a nice little shadow box, is a family heirloom and not for sale. But it's on the wall in a frame, but no, like, glass holding it in. Yeah. It's just, like, hooked into this little shadow box on the wall. Anyway, uh, Piper kind of jumps in to ask for some wormwood. He starts to answer her. And then An Ling recaptures his attention. She tries to show him the note her father gave her. He says he doesn't read Chinese. Piper again asks for wormwood, and he again starts to leave to help Piper. Yeah, and at this point, An Ling is practically begging for the Dragon Blade, mentioning his dad. And he's like, my dad's out of town until Tuesday. You'll just have to come back then. And then he actually excuses himself to go help Piper because he's like, I have other customers. Piper asks for my favorite thing ever, a small stemmed sprig of wormwood. Yep. I just, I don't know why, but I just had this image of of her just holding up this tiny little Little tree. Little little tree. tree. Yeah. He turns to get it and An Ling jumps onto the wall and grabs the dragon blade. Like spider jump. Yeah. Like Like she is sideways on the wall. Yeah. The guy yells at her. Piper tries to freeze her, but only succeeds in freezing the shopkeeper. And An Ling jumps through the window, shattering it. And then we cut to An Ling walking down the alley as Piper rounds the corner after her. So I have to wonder, if she left the shopkeeper frozen, or unfroze him and tried to explain anything before running out? Doubtful, I'm sure. But I just imagine somebody disappearing from in front of you. And then your shop window is broken. Instantly. Yeah. And nothing is said of it, no mention of it, no nothing. And I bring this up because it will come back later. Anyway, Piper yells to get on Ling's attention and then causes some boxes in the alley to explode in front of her. She asks who Piper is. The Zen Master appears and Yen Lo appears in a puddle at his feet. Daddy Zen Master calls out for on Ling, who says that she has the blade. But then Yen Lo jumps out of the puddle and stabs the Zen Master. She calls out for him, and then both Yen Lo and the Zen Master disappear back into said puddle of water. Yeah. She heads toward the puddle, Piper follows her, and we go to commercial break. We come back in the manor, in the living room, because, you know, that's apparently a thing that happened, where it was just like, I've now seen this, you saw that I tried to freeze you, come back to my house, and everything's fine. An Ling is talking to Piper and Leo. And we see on the coffee table that there's a teapot and some matching cups and the dragon blade just sitting there. It's a lovely small dagger, very ornate in its sheath. Mm-hmm. Yeah, An Ling is bringing them up to speed on what's going on and tells them that Yen Lo escaped to a mystical region between life and death where souls go before reincarnation to hide. Yeah, he went to this this place to hide. Well, I mean, I guess the souls don't go there to hide. They just go there before reincarnation. Yes, the souls go there before reincarnation. Le- Yen Lo went there to hide. Yeah. I wrote that wrong. I wrote it funny. I'm apologizing. Piper is, of course, confused. Leo realizes that An, An- Ling means limbo, 
and explains that Yenlo can cheat death by staying in limbo because the stab wound won't get any worse while he's there. Yeah. Unling says that the dragon blade has the power to trap human souls, and it's the only way to save her father. Piper picks up the dragon blade and asks Anling if she thinks her father is still alive. Anling explains that Yenlo wants to punish her father, so by keeping him in limbo, his soul can't be reborn. Piper puts the dragon blade down and asks if she knows how to get to limbo. Anling tells her she never mastered that skill, so Piper says they'll have to figure it out their own way. She calls out for Phoebe and Paige. Anling tries to protest out of fear of putting them in danger from Yenlo as Phoebe and Paige enter from the kitchen. Piper tells Anling that she should stay in the manor where she'll be safe. Anling's like, nowhere is safe. Yenlo can use any surface of water as a portal. And then Leo realizes he can't be out of limbo very long or his wound will kill him. Paige and Phoebe stand behind Leo. Piper introduces them to Anling and then Paige, as Phoebe, introduces herself as Paige. And everyone looks at her very curiously. She quickly, well, not that quickly, corrects herself to say Paige's older sister Phoebe and motions to Paige, who introduces herself awkwardly. Yeah. Paige here. Howdy. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't exactly that, but it was it was quite awkward. Yeah. Piper seems to take it in stride, tells them they've got a water-loving demon, and asks Phoebe to take Paige with her to turn off the rusty valve of the water main. Paige is Phoebe who doesn't know where anything is in the manor, starts to go in the wrong direction. However, Phoebe as Paige pulls her in the right direction, nervously laughs, and leads her out of the room. Piper says they need to look for another way to get into Limbo in the Book of Shadows, and heads up to the attic with Leo following behind. We then get some lovely thunder clouds, and pan down to see Yenlo walking up to the Zen Master, who is tied to a tree. It is a barren tree in shade of grey. For this entire place of limbo that they are in is barren wasteland. Looks kind of like a Utah desert. Yep. 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 Utah, maybe some New Mexico. Yeah. Yenlo seems surprised and impressed that their wounds don't hurt or bleed, but didn't think that the entrance to reincarnation would be a big sucking hole. And we are shown a doorway with a vortex, and there's like a little grayed out oriental bridge yeah it's a a broken like a down ornamental. it's like a little broken down bridge fence type yeah. thing anyway the zen master says that yenlo can enter the vortex cleanse his soul and start anew and yenlo's like bitch i know how karma works i'll probably come back as a tapeworm or a nice dung beetle i've worked too hard for this to give up on the life i've got the Zen Master says that he's got nothing in this life because he's, you know, evil. evil. And Yen Lo's like, I found my purpose, which is to rid the world of all the Zen Masters. I'll trap them all here in limbo. And he lets out a nice evil chuckle, which Daniel Day Kim is very good at. Yeah, it was it was quite a nice, nice evil chuckle. Yeah, the Zen Master reminds him that no one can escape their karma. And Yen Lo says that no one's ever escaped from limbo either. And yet. Yeah, Zen Master asks how he escaped. There's no portal of water. Yenlo replies, there is water in the clouds. Yes. Every cloud has a watery lining, which is a little creepy. But, you know, evil, what can you do? Yep. He then jumps in the air, floats there for a moment, says he's off to kill his daughter, and levitates up. Just right up into the sky. Yeah. Uh, we cut to the manor in the basement where Paige and Phoebe are trying to shut off the water main. Now, reminder... Paige is in Phoebe's body. Phoebe is in Paige's body. But I'm just going to call them by their own names in this scene. I hope it's not too confusing. Paige tells Phoebe to be careful of breaking her nails. Even though her nails aren't that long to begin with, so there's really no breaking chance, but all right. And Phoebe tells her she almost got them busted. She should just smile and nod when they're together. Paige thinks that while that might work on Piper, it wouldn't be very effective against a demon. Paige, again... While in Phoebe's body, still has the lollipop thing going on. Yeah. I wonder why they've decided to make this personal choice, other than the fact of now we are like, oh, right, now Phoebe's holding the lollipop, so now we know that's Paige. It's literally... They do actually continue this for a bit. Do they? Not very long, I don't think. Okay. But it does happen in another episode. Okay. Because... I yeah I I'm not I I don't remember her having. I think it might be the before. next episode actually. Okay. Um. Anyway. Anyway, Phoebe realizes Paige is right. Wonders if Paige can use her power of levitation while in her body and asks her to lose the lollipop. She has enough cavities. Yeah. 
Paige apologizes, saying that it's a nervous habit, and then sticks the lollipop into the hilt of a nearby sword on the wall. (laughs) She then tries to levitate and kick the punching bag, but falls down onto her butt. Paige laments that Piper is never going to trust her with magic again. And Phoebe's like, Piper won't find out if we reverse the potion. Phoebe helps Paige back up, and Paige mentions that she thinks she knows how to remake the potion, but now they're out of powdered toadstool. Which was salt. Uh Uh-huh. Phoebe says that she thinks she knows where to get some, tells Paige to avoid Piper, and practice trying to levitate in case she needs to do that, and Paige sighs as Phoebe leaves. So, to recap and clear up any confusion, we have Phoebe's body in the basement while Paige's body is off going shopping. Everybody still good? Cool. Cut Cut to to the foyer. foyer. The doorbell rings and Phoebe, in Paige's body, answers it. A tall, skinny black man is at the door. We will learn that this is Mason, Mr. Cowan's son. He is played by Jacoby Wynn, W-Y-N-N-E. He only has 10 acting credits between 1995 and 2005. He has no picture on IMDb. Phoebe asks if she can help him. He laughs and says he enjoys a sense of humor in a girl, and then asks Paige if she's ready to go. Paige, in Phoebe's body, comes walking up with Lollipop in hand. She greets Mason, asking how he is. He replies that he's fine, but doesn't know who she is. Yeah. Paige covers by saying she feels like she knows him because Paige can't stop talking about Mason, the the boss's boss's son, and looks over at Phoebe and says, he's as cute as you said he was. Phoebe, of course, tries to usher him out and close the door, but Mason stops her, and Paige brings up the fact that they're supposed to go to dinner. Mason asks if Italian is okay, but Paige is like, no, you need to get Chinese. Chinatown Chinese. Yeah. Uh, And she hands Phoebe a gray gingham coat with a flower patterned lining and whispers for her to keep keep my face out of the sun, which I thought was really cute, and pushes her out the door. And we can see as she's handing her this coat that the lollipop she's holding is still in its plastic wrapper. And we know this because we can see the barcode. (laughs) Just putting that out there. Because it'll be relevant in a moment. Yeah. Phoebe gives her one last look of concern before she and Mason leave. And as Paige is closing the door, Piper comes down the stairs and asks who is at the door. And Paige now has an unwrapped lollipop in Phoebe's mouth. Yeah. There is no way she would have been able to unwrap that lollipop that quickly. Just saying. Just saying. Paige tells Piper that it was Paige's date at the door, which Piper seems to think odd that Paige is still going on the date, but asks, what's What's with the the lollipop? lollipop? Paige, as Phoebe, shrugs, saying that Paige got her into them. Piper tells Phoebe that she's starting to worry about Paige. Paige asks why. Piper says that Paige has made her realize that she hates being the big sister, which I think is very funny because she's always been Phoebe's big sister. Mm Mm-hmm. Piper says that it's suddenly her responsibility to teach Paige how to be a witch and that Paige doesn't listen to her. Paige, as Phoebe, says that Paige listens sometimes and Piper is like, yeah, Paige has a lot of potential, but she doesn't seem to care about anything. Paige says that Paige does care and that Piper just needs to give Paige a chance because she's the kind of person who needs to learn from her mistakes. And then she tells her Paige is learning fast, Yeah, which Piper seems to accept and then heads off. Paige sighs, puts the lollipop back in her mouth, and I'm hoping that everyone is still with me. Yeah. Not confused? Okay, good. Mm Mm-hmm. Because it's... Yeah. That scene especially was one of the most confusing. Popping back to Herb Shop, Chinatown. It's supposed to be the same one as before because we see the same shopkeep dude behind the counter. There's a bunch of customers around, and no one seems to be freaking out about a broken window. So... Duh. Like, it's never mentioned that the window is broken. It's never mentioned that, you know, they disappeared out of nowhere. There's, it's not brought up again at all whatsoever. But we do hear rain that's supposed to be outside that is quite loud. Yeah. So there is the possibility that the window is still broken and it's just maybe covered with like a piece of plywood. Yeah. But I'm just saying it's never brought up. It's never mentioned. And he doesn't even seem to be like worried about anything. Whatever. Just say. Anyway, Phoebe is Paige and Mason enter, and Phoebe's looking around. She's still wearing that gray gingham jacket. Yep, she's she's put on the jacket, and it has like a little, like, gray flower detail on on one of the shoulders. Mm-hmm. It was it was a weird looking flower detail thing. Yeah, and she's carrying a large tan purse. Yep. 
Mason sees a jar of something in liquid that kind of looked like a dead rat. It was weird. Like mm-hmm. it was, it was, it was probably like a a plant of some sort, but it looked like like dead animals. Yeah, just saying. Anyway, Phoebe sighs and says, "Oh, I just need to find some powdered toadstool." Finds a few packages of it sitting in a basket, so she grabs one. Mason's like, "I'm not into the whole herbal scene." Phoebe replies that Paige isn't either, and he's like, do you always talk about yourself in the third person? Phoebe, of course, then catches herself, saying that it's somewhat of a character flaw, and Mason asks what the toadstool is for. Phoebe covers by saying it's an aphrodisiac, and then heads to the counter. Mason seems very interested in that, and mentions that his dad called her unique. She asks what else his dad has said about her, And we learn that Mr. Cohen thinks that Paige may quit to start her own agency or end up in jail if he doesn't make her an actual social worker soon. He's just not sure which. Yeah. Yeah. And then Phoebe, as Paige, replies, sounds like me at that age. And pays for her powdered toadstool. And Mason is rightfully confused by her reply. Which Phoebe realizes... He's not having fun. Yeah. He replies, oh, we're in Chinatown shopping for a sexual stimulant. I'm surrounded by chicken claws and goat brains. I'm having a great time. Yeah. Phoebe realizes that she's also having more fun than she's had in a while and mentions that her boyfriend hasn't been much fun lately. Mason questions this and she amends to ex-boyfriend. And then we hear a clap of thunder outside. Phoebe realizes Yen Lo must be coming, and Mason wonders if that's another aphrodisiac. Which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Phoebe just is like, I gotta go. And she leaves Mason in the store as she runs out. Yeah. Because reasons. Mm -hmm. But apparently this had to have happened after they went for food. Yeah. This, This was not the first interaction. They went for food, which we didn't see, and then they went shopping for powdered toadstool. Yeah. We cut to an exterior shot of the manor with tons of rain coming down and lightning in the air. And it's a shot we've never had before, but I really liked it. It was a really, really nice shot. Like, it really looked like somebody took a dollhouse, put it outside in a thunderstorm. Ha, yeah. It was great. In the basement, Paige as Phoebe is trying to levitate and failing. Cole shimmers in behind her next to the stairs. He's in a blue button-down shirt, black pants, and a black jacket. Paige tries to levitate again, fails again. Cole asks what she's doing, and she replies that she's doing levitating exercises. He asks if she's decided to make training her priority. She replies in the affirmative, which he seems pleased about, and says they can pick up where they left off, that he'll throw just a couple of low-voltage energy balls at her and she should try to avoid them. She begins to question him, and he throws an energy ball that hits her in the shoulder, which rips the strap of her sports bra, And then throws one that hits her in the butt. Paige calls him rude, says she's not having any fun. He replies that fighting the source isn't supposed to be fun. And she replies that he's not the source and he shouldn't treat his girlfriend that way. She says he can treat murderers, demons, and possibly phone solicitors as such, but not his girlfriend. He walks over, asking what's gotten into her. She instantly replies, Paige, before realizing what she said, and amends that she told Paige how he was treating her, and that Paige says he's way out of line. Yeah, and Cole tells Paige, but Phoebe, uh, that she's the most important thing in his life, and he has to push her hard so he doesn't lose her. So Paige replies that pushing her that way will will make him lose her. He catches that she said her... She says she meant to say me and tries to play it out that she's angry about him ruining her top and now she has to change. And she heads upstairs and we see Cole with a suspicious look in his eye. Because he's not a fucking moron. Someone be cottoning on. Yeah, he's not a moron. He catches this way faster than Piper does. In fact, Piper doesn't fucking catch it until they fucking tell her outright. Yeah. Which kind of annoyed me. A little bit, yeah. We'll get there in a minute. We cut up to the attic. It's raining heavily outside. And somehow, water is leaking in through the window and forming a puddle on the floor. I mean, so technically, the intruder got intruder window. Mmm. Oh. Oh. I'm not the first one to make that joke. Oh, that was physically painful. You liked it when it was on Doctor Who. Oh, I know. Oh, God. Okay. 
Anyway, so, Piper and Leo yeah. are off looking in the Book of Shadows, and they seem to be on the very last page of it. Yep. Onling is sitting down at a table looking into a small bowl of water. Piper says there's nothing in the book about how to reach Limbo. Leo goes over to An Ling, asking if it's safe for her to have that bowl of water, but she assures him that it's too small for Yenlo to use as a portal. He could maybe get his hand through it, though. Yeah. Piper walks over and asks what she's doing with it. An Ling tells them that her father could use water as a looking glass into other worlds, and once reached into a bowl of water and picked her a plum from the Garden of Eden. Aww. Aww. Leo asks if she can see her father, but she can't. She puts down the bowl, wishing her father was with her because he'd know what to do, and Leo decides to check with the elders about how to reach Limbo. He orbs out. An Ling wonders if her father made the wrong choice between her and Yenlo. Piper sits down and reminds An Ling that she beat Yenlo in a battle. Yeah, An Ling says that she didn't kill him, actually made him strong enough to take her father out of the world. She doesn't feel worthy of following in his footsteps. Piper sympathizes due to having recently lost her big sister and having to try to fill her shoes. Very, very, very big shoes. Mm Mm-hmm. Unling asks where Piper finds the strength, and Piper replies, I haven't yet, but I'll let you know when I do. We hear thunder. Piper looks out the window, and we can see, again, just rain streaking out. And I like this this view, because we can see the puddle on the floor, which she apparently can't see. Nope. But we also see the dollhouse version of the manor. Yeah. In front of the window, just getting lit up. And that's why I was like, it reminds me of a dollhouse getting wet, because you can yeah. just see the dollhouse later. Anyway, um, she says that they need to protect the house from Yen Lo because of the rain, and they leave the attic. And then Yen Lo appears from the puddle that we saw forming on the on the floor at the beginning of the scene, and he is wielding his katana as he jumps out of this puddle. It was the funniest thing for me. Because he does this, like, jump up and, like, crouch with the katana, like, if they're here, I'll cut them now, rah, rah. Yeah, it reminded me of that little ninja doll yes exactly exactly oh my god oh man just jumping up onto the hospital bed oh man all right so we go to commercial i forgot break. about that until this moment yeah yeah we go to commercial break and when we come back phoebe as Paige enters the house she's still got her her gray gingham jacket on and has a pink bucket hat on her head no uh, bucket hats she puts her purse on one of the small tables in the hall and removes her purchase of powdered toadstool. Yeah. Yen Lo comes down the stairs, katana sheathed, but pauses and hides as Phoebe takes off Paige's coat and hat and then turns to go into the living room. She nearly slams right into Cole, who has come into the doorway. And via Yen Lo's point of view, Cole apologizes for stalling her and says that everyone is on Yen Lo alert. She hangs up the coat saying that that's why she rushed home, and he offers her his jacket because she looks chilled. And she eyes him and tells him to keep it. He puts his arm up on the wall, kind of pinning her in place, and asks if he's making her feel uncomfortable. Phoebe, as Paige, says she's not, but wonders what his girlfriend, you know, Phoebe, Phoebe, would think about how he's acting. We see Yen Lo leave, and Cole says that Phoebe is so obsessed with training that she's not interested in romance anymore, but that Paige seems to be full of the passion and desire he's been missing. But he doesn't call her by name. That's well, I know, thing. but like I'm yeah, just he, trying to clarify right, right, right. who but, physically he's talking to. Right, but he goes, he goes, you seem to be. So like he isn't calling by name yeah, at this moment. And then, so she tries to leave. He stops and kisses her, like full on kisses her. And then Paige as Phoebe walks down the stairs. She is now, dear God, this outfit. She is now in a long sleeve orange leotard possible bodysuit, but I can't tell without seeing if it has a crotch closure. It looks like it does because it never comes untucked. That doesn't mean anything. Not even the slightest, though. But but that the only difference between a bodysuit and a leotard is a leotard is one piece of fabric completely. Oh, okay. And a bodysuit has crotch closures. Okay, that's what you mean. I got confused. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, I don't know if it's a leotard or a bodysuit. Whatever. And she has paired it with a pair of dark brown jeans. And we know that it's not just a shirt because her pants are low enough to show off a bit of exposed Hip. Oh, early aughts. And it drove me 
nuts. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> because it was a cute outfit if you just pulled the pants up a little bit. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. her hair is down and straight, so she is completely taken it out of the ponytail. And nicely parted in the middle. Yeah. Anyway, Paige as Phoebe cries out when she sees them and heads toward them, while Phoebe as Paige flips Cole with a martial arts move. Phoebe asks, how, how he could do, do this to me? me? And Cole puts up his hands innocently, telling Phoebe, I was just trying to have a little fun, which is what you had been complaining about me not doing. She starts to reply, but then realizes he, he called actually her called her Phoebe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and he motions to Paige as Phoebe, asking if she'd rather he kissed her, and gets back to his feet. Phoebe says no, Paige asks how he knew, and Cole mentions that Paige sucks at levitating, as well as setting him straight in the way that only a sister could. <laughs> Phoebe seems impressed that Paige did that. Cole says he's going to leave and let them work this out and tells Phoebe to call him when he's herself again and then grabs her butt. Well, well Paige's, Paige's butt. butt. Yeah. Paige, as Phoebe, looks away slightly in disgust as Cole shimmers out. And Phoebe says that they need to switch back because even she's getting confused. And, and then we hear Anling yell for Piper from the kitchen. Yeah. It's the, watch out! We cut to the kitchen, where Yenlo is attacking Piper and Anling. He kicks Piper into the kitchen table, breaking it, which brings our furniture annihilation quotient up to three for the season and 52 for the series. Yenlo takes out his katana. Anling takes out the dragon blade, mm -hmm. which glows green for a bit, and that makes Yenlo realize that it's actually the dragon blade. Yep. Paige and Phoebe run in as Yenlo attacks and cuts on Lang, making her drop the blade. Piper calls out for Phoebe to stop him. Paige, as Phoebe, jumps up and levitates in the air for a second before starting to spin helplessly in a circle. Yenlo takes this opportunity to escape through the dishwater in the sink. Phoebe pulls Paige down. Piper calls for Leo. He orbs in. She tells him that Anling's hurt. She tells Paige and Phoebe to follow her, and Leo heals Anling as the sisters leave. Now, we see Yen Lo run and jump into the dishwater, but that's all we see. Yeah. The girls walk through the dining room into the wicker room. Piper asks what the hell is going on. Phoebe, as Paige, says that she was soaking potion pots in the sink and forgot to drain them. Piper blows that off and asks Phoebe what's wrong with her powers. Paige, as Phoebe, doesn't answer. And, and Phoebe, Phoebe, as Paige, Paige says, replies, I'm, I'm over, over here. here. Paige says it's her fault, so Piper shouldn't get mad at Phoebe. Phoebe says that she agreed to keep it a secret. Paige is like, no, I messed up the potion because I guess at the ingredients instead of concentrating. And, and Piper, Piper finally realizes. realizes that they've switched bodies and gets super pissed at them. Yeah, like, like legit, it was the realization of Piper figuring it out took her too long. Yeah, way too long. Way too long. Like she should have she should have just known it, especially when it was the I'm over here. That's when she should have been like, you switched bodies, are you fucking crazy? But she doesn't. She waits for them to have this entire conversation yeah. about whose fault it is. Yeah. Phoebe says it was an accident. Piper reminds them that accidents get people killed and asks what would have happened if it had been the source instead of Yenlo just then. She says that they still have no idea how to get to Limbo, seems to be in thought for a moment, and then asks Paige if she remembers what she used in the potion. Paige says that Phoebe just got the ingredient they had been missing, and Piper seems to be pleased by that, and they head back to the kitchen. There's a small time jump mm -hmm. now. The girls, Leo and An Ling, are all in the kitchen as Paige, as Phoebe, stirs a potion. The only ingredient still waiting to be added is the powdered toadstool. Paige, as Phoebe, throws in the powdered toadstool. They say they want to be themselves again, and they switch back with a lovely bright light. Yeah, the others wait anxiously, but it's quickly evident they're back to normal. They have a cute sister moment about what Phoebe ate while she was in Paige's body. Kung Pao chicken, if you're wondering. Piper gets to have a bit of exposition time, where she explains that the only person who knows how to get into Limbo is already there, and we learn that she wants to swap souls with An Ling's father, because she thinks it's the best way to surprise Yen Lo. Leo thinks it's too risky, but since the elders have no other ideas, Piper gets her way. Yeah. She takes the powdered toadstool from Phoebe, says she wants to be the Zen master, <laughs> which is a fun, fun thing to see coming out of Holly's mouth. Yep. 
and then throws it into the potion. Which makes me wonder. They didn't have to remake the potion. They didn't have two separate pots of potion, one with the toadstool and one without. Why does just adding more fucking toadstool make it happen? It's a weird ritualistic element, yeah. yeah. Like, is it literally just that... We don't even know what the purpose of the potion is supposed to be. Yeah. We just know that Paige fucked up. Yeah. And so, is something about the Potter Toadstool making it, like, a genie potion or something? I don't know. It's a soul-swapping potion. But it's No, also... it's a wishing potion. Well, but it's... Kind of. Well, I mean, they only use it for body swapping. Yeah. But, like, it's a wish potion, because that's what Paige did right before she added all that powdered toadstool the first time. She's like, I'd love to know what it's like to kick ass like Phoebe. She didn't say, I want to switch with Phoebe. Right, and but she 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 also didn't say, I wish. She did something that, she said a metaphorical thing that could literally be interpreted as body swapping. Yeah. But so but my, it was stated as a wish, which is why... But she didn't say, I wish. She, she no, doesn't no, use that a, word. No, so. no, no, it's I, just ones I'd like to know. Like, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a wish. It's not an I wish. It's yeah. just a wish. Yeah. I, I do have to wonder, though, is this a potion that she accidentally made up? Do you know what I mean? Maybe. Like, is it a, a little bit of this, a little bit of that? Hey, look, I've made this yeah. thing that didn't exist before. Is it a Mambo number five potion? A little mm. bit of Monica. <laughs> oh, God. I hate you. You love me. Oh, you're lucky I love you. I know. Anyway. anyway. Uh, we see the bright light leave Piper find its way to the Zen Master in limbo while he's still tied to the tree. Yenlo standing nearby, not looking in that direction. He doesn't seem to notice what the fuck is going on. Yeah. And then so, the Zen Master, now in Piper's body, tells Phoebe and Paige they have a very brave sister. He immediately cottons on to what's going on here. Yeah. He and Anling basically say hello, and then he asks where the dragon blade is. Anling says that she used it to fight Yenlo, but he knocked it out of her hands and asked if Phoebe picked it up. She did not. She asked if Paige did, but she did not. Which means, you know, the Zen Master goes, well, who has it? We immediately cut to Limbo. Where where we we see see the dragon blade in Yenlo's hand. Because apparently he grabbed it. He didn't grab the sheath, just the blade. Yeah. Uh, Yenlo mentions that the old man blacked out and Piper tries to cover, but Yenlo holds the blade toward her body and asks who she is. And Piper spouts a lovely, I, I am, am one, one with, with the, the universe. universe, which makes Yenlo laugh, mentions that he was a disciple for 20 years and realizes that she must be one of the witches because An Ling doesn't have the power to switch souls. He then wonders how they're going to rescue her soul when he's got it and captures Piper's soul in the dragon blade. He does this by just touching the blade to the body. Doesn't cut it or anything. Yeah. Just Touches it to the body. Mm -hmm. We go to commercial break, and we come back inside the attic. Paige and Phoebe come in with Leo, bringing the Dragon Blade's sheath to Anling and the Zen Master in Piper's body. The Zen Master realizes that Yenlo must have the Dragon Blade, waves a hand over the puddle on the floor, and sees his body in limbo. He realizes that Yenlo has used the Dragon Blade to capture Piper's soul. Still not sure exactly how he realizes that, other than the fact that his body's head is kind of just down. Sagged down. Yeah. Yeah, and they need to get the dragon blade back from Yen Lo to get Piper back. Phoebe asks to be shown how to get there. An Ling tries to say that she should go alone because Piper was just trying to help save her father. Paige is firm that they're all gonna go. And the Zen Master takes a moment to ask why An Ling was trying to save his life. An Ling says that she's seen Leo work miracles so he can help once they get the Zen Master's body back. The Zen Master says that Yen Lo has had time to learn how the rules of limbo work. Leo's like, oh, we should get going. And the Zen Master's like, uh, no, you go in there. You're going to get sucked into that vortex. You won't be able to help heal anyone. Phoebe, of course, realizes that the Zen Master is right and tells Leo to stay. She then hands him the sheath for the dragon blade. And Holly is doing a really great job emulating the Zen Master in yeah. all of this, because she's kind of doing a similar thing to what Rose was doing, being Phoebe, where it was just, like, very mature. Mm-hmm. It's but all in the body language. It's all in the body language, uh, but Piper's also is very vocal. Yeah. Because 
it's it's very calm. Like it's super zen. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah, she does a very, very good job. And she's the dialogue, the cadence of the dialogue is very different from how Piper would speak. Mm-hmm. And Holly's portraying that really nicely. I love it. Yeah, so Phoebe hands the sheath of the dragon blade to Leo. And then without another word, Zen Master Piper jumps into the puddle. On Link follows, then Phoebe, then Paige. But nobody has said a word. So it's it's just like Mary Poppins. I, I it's get like it. jumping into the chalk drawings. Like I just once you see it modeled, you can do it. I just think it's very, very funny because like nobody says anything. They see the Zen Master jump in the puddle and they're like, Oh, is that all it is? Just jump at the puddle? Mary and it Poppins. Works. Mary Poppins. It was just, I don't know. I just had this, like, moment of, like, it would have been hilarious if one of them tried to jump and it didn't work. Well, the Zen mm-hmm. Master is not gonna, not gonna, like, quip about it beforehand. Also, this is how easy it is to switch pronouns for people. Yeah. They were using he pronouns for the Zen Master yeah. in Piper's body. Like, dude! Hello! I know. I love it! Yeah. Anyway. Trans so. support! Woo! Woo! So... With some thunder and lightning, we find ourselves in limbo. Those who jumped into the puddle emerge from a hole in a cave wall and through a wall of fog. We then pan over to see the vortex and the Zen Master's body tied to the tree not too far away from each other. Yeah. Paige and Phoebe rush over, Paige asking aloud where the dragon blade is and kind of searching the floor, which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. The Zen Master shushes her as Yenlo comes down from above them. He goes to attack with the katana, Anlin kicks it out of his grasp, and he winds up kicking Piper's body. This is where this one gets complex. Mm-hmm. Flying through the air directly toward the vortex, the Zen Master in Piper's body lands harmlessly on the ground a few feet in front of it before it tries to pull him in. Luckily, Luckily that little ornamental bridge that we saw earlier mm-hmm. is able to serve as an anchor point so he can stop from getting sucked into it directly. An Ling rushes over to help save her father. Paige Again, notices and that there, there's like a bunch of like yeah. wind whipping and it's just, it's very, uh uh-huh. it's very black hole. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of reminded me. It's like a me, tornado. It kind of reminded me of when they were in the ice cream truck world. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Where yeah. it's the, the, yeah, the, the, having to not be sucked into a portal so you have to hang on to something for Yeah. Just life. like, just like gravity, the, the influence decreases by the square of the distance or whatever. I'm probably not sure, correct math. on that quote. But, yeah. like, either way, um, the, that's why gravity is actually a very weak force because it's only incredibly powerful when you're very close to the thing that's supposed to have gravitational pull. Yeah. Which is why it's very difficult for us to get off of Earth. But once we're off of Earth, it's fairly easy to stay away. Yeah. So long as you're not dead. Um, so true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway... Um, Paige, Paige notices sees that Yenlo has the dragon blade in the front of his belt, yeah, unsheathed right, right in front of some very important family jewels. Yeah, he doesn't seem to care. She points at it, says Yenlo's belt, and the dagger orbs oh, to her. Just the dagger? Just the dagger. I thought it would have been hilarious if the belt had come with it. Yep. But it doesn't. Just the dagger does. Yeah, Phoebe realizes that their powers are expanded in limbo, and she tells Paige to get Piper's soul out of the dragon blade while she keeps Yenlo busy. She goes over to him. He calls her Black Belt Barbie, which she seems to take offense to. And so just because I think it's funny, I'm going to link to a wiki list of all of Barbie's careers, and she has never, that I could find, been a Black Belt. Oh, she's never been a dojo master? No. Oh, darn. She's done a whole bunch of other stuff, though. She's had a bunch of military careers. Mm, yeah. yeah. All sorts of... She's been a yoga instructor, but she has never been a black So belt. yoga instructor is probably the closest she's gotten to karate master. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Phoebe levitates and kicks Yen Lo. He goes up flying onto a large flat rock and drops his katana. Yeah. It drops to the ground down below. Yeah. Paige, Paige has zero clue. Yeah. Paige has no idea what to do. So she asks Phoebe, who tells her to use her power to orb Piper's soul out of the dagger, and then levitates up to the large rock to fight Yenlo. And we have an interesting bit of continuity issue here. When we see Alyssa fighting, we can see the tattoo that she has on her back. 
but when her stunt double is shown, there's no tattoo. And it's super obvious if you're paying attention. Yep. Because the way that the orange bodysuit leotard thing is low on the back, yeah. if her hair moves in such a way, you can see her tattoo. Because yeah. they didn't cover it up. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Anyway, Paige starts to orb Piper's soul out of the dragon light, and we see a, like, a cute little solely white white light pinky pinky light yeah coming out of the blade and then she's like what do i do now and phoebe yells at her and she's like put it back in the body yeah Paige does so and piper in the zen master's body thanks her and then asks to be untied and it's, what does she say she says something very thanks for the lift I yes think. thanks for the lift yeah Paige unties her and piper realizes that she can't use her power while in the zen master's body Yenlo kicks Phoebe off of the rock and she falls to the ground. Phoebe, remembering her training moment from earlier, complains of a twisted ankle and asks for a time out. And it was it, like like the way it was <sighs> said was far too clunky. Like the dialogue was too clunky and it's apparently I, supposed to be a fake out. Yeah, and and I I think that's but, like, why I had it was clunky. Never gotten that. Really? Well, not really. I mean, like... I think that's why it was supposed to be clunky. It was like, oh, I've twisted my ankle. I need a timeout, please. It's like, just, that's why it was so clunky is because it wasn't I, it was I think an obvious the dialogue itself made it seem like it wasn't a fake out because it was just too stupid. But if you look at her face, you could tell. The the facial features... It would have been... It would have been... facial acting that she was doing. I don't doing. know. It would, I think it would have been better if it was just like, ah, my ankle, like... Yeah, like yeah, more I, more stereotypical, but not a hey, let me rehash what happened to my ankle previously. Hey, you know, I could say things. Anyway, I know, I know. I, it yeah. So, Yenlo jumps down from the rock saying, "This will be easier than I thought," and goes to grab his katana. Phoebe takes that moment to yell for Paige. So Paige orbs the dragon blade to Phoebe, who uses it to duck under Yenlo's blade and stab him just under the collarbone, thereby capturing his soul. We see Yenlo's body falls to the ground kind of again in that slow-mo death scene. Yeah. And we see the vortex that is still trying to suck Piper's body into it change into a peaceful patch of clouds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Piper's body is no longer in danger. Like, there's no there's no uh, suction, there's no gravity well happening. Right, because, you know, yeah. it's not meant to be a vortex of suckage. Yeah. Everyone takes a moment to catch their breath as and Limbo changes into a beautiful garden with lush green grass and flowering trees. And it starts with the bridge. Yeah. It's really cool. You see the bridge suddenly become whole and like a nice painted red. Mm -hmm. And then like the grass all turns, like the grass all is suddenly there and all lovely green. And then the trees grow leaves. And then one of them grows these lovely dangly pink flowers like a wisteria. Yeah. It was it was lovely. Mm -hmm. It was absolutely lovely. Yeah. Uh, Paige looks around. She's like, oh, this is beautiful. I wonder what happened. Piper, actual Piper, walks over and she's like, beats, beats the, the hell, hell out of me. me. And Which then, is how you know that it's actually Piper. And she's she's walking in a way where she's like a little unsteady. Yeah. But like was, trying to cover it up. It was great. Then the Zen Master and An Ling walk over and join them. And the Zen Master says that the natural order of things has been restored, including their souls. So now we are back to proper names with proper bodies. Yes. Piper asks how. He tells them that Limbo had became a reflection of Yenlo's fears of crossing over, but that Limbo is supposed to be a welcoming and peaceful place. Mm -hmm. Which is why it's not supposed to be a vortex that's trying to suck you out of it. Yeah. You're meant to... Stay here for a while, enjoy the peace, and then walk over the bridge into the clouds to be reborn. Mm -hmm. Because we are in Zen Master Limbo. Yeah. Where, you know, it's souls part of get the reborn. cycle. Right. Anyway, Unling's like, oh, we need to get back. Leo can heal you. But the Zen Master's like, no, I was mortally wounded. It's my time to go. His daughter tries to protest, and he's like, oh, no, no, sweetheart, you know better than to cling to the physical world the, the way, way you clung, clung to my hand, hand on, on that bridge. bridge. To which I laughingly went, she was saving Piper's body, too. Like, yeah. like there was a reason why I couldn't let you go at that moment, you know? Because could you imagine if Piper's body had gone through that vortex uh, with, with the Zen Master's soul in it? Uh, Piper fuck. would be stuck in the Zen Master's body. Uh, 
fuck. That would have been fucked oh, up. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Anyway, she she's all like, but you're my father. He reminds her that the only lesson that's keeping her from being a true Zen master is knowing that death is part of life. He mentions that their friends have learned that lesson recently. And then Phoebe hands him the dragon blade sans sheath, since that's still with Leo. And he says that even Yen Lo must be reborn, as is the natural order, and starts to head toward the cloud vortex. Which isn't really not a, not vortex a vortex anymore. Like the cloud gate, which yeah. is the bean. Um, <laughs> fun uh, fact. Chicago. Yep. Fun fact. The bean is actually called the cloud gate, and Nish Kapoor is an asshole who doesn't want you to call it the bean. Yeah, well, you know, fuck him. I know, right? Anyway, Anling stops her dad to tell him she loves him. He replies that he'll always love her and then turns around and walks through the cloud vortex with the dragon blade, disappears on the other side. Yep. Paige then asks if anyone knows how to leave this place. And Anling says she thinks she knows how now. And they all join hands in a circle and Anling and Phoebe levitate them up. And the visual on this is great because Anling can levitate in limbo. Phoebe can levitate always. Mm -hmm. Piper is going along with it mostly. Like, she's at a slightly lower level, but she's not, like, panicky or anything. She's just like, oh, okay, I guess you guys are kind of pulling me. Her arms are, like, she's, like, her arms are a little bit up. And then Paige. (laughs) Oh, Paige. We get a shot that's from an upward angle, and they're clearly on a green screen. Yeah. And Paige has, like, one foot, like, out behind her, and she's, like, way below the rest of them. Yeah, it is hilarious yeah it's like it's it's a it's like the the one bit from peter pan like the animated thing where Mm -hmm. he's like dragging the kids and like some of the kids are having a better time of it and i think one of the kids is like "Ah." yeah it was very funny Mm -hmm. so we are now in the final scene we find ourselves in a lush green space that seems to be a botanical garden of some sort possibly it's like a median full of really pretty flowers yeah and it's we're assuming it's sometime the next day. Yeah. Because they usually only pop one day ahead yeah. when things happen. Piper and Paige are walking down a bit of pavement. Paige is in dark jeans with a light blue zip up hoodie, no bra, mm-hmm. no shirt underneath that I'm aware of. Yeah. With her hair up in a messy ponytail with some tendrils hanging. She's also got a very large Staten necklace on that looks to be a portrait of a woman in a brooch. Yeah. It was kind of cool, and it kind of reminded me of the picture that they have on the wall. Mm -hmm. Piper is in lighter jeans and a darker blue top, with her hair half pulled back into a bun, most of it down. Paige is pointing to different plants, calling out what they are and mentioning how they're used. So she mentions the aloe plant, which is medicinal, taro root, which is magical, also other things, St. John's wort, medicinal, Ragged Robin, magical, Cupid's dart, strictly aromatic. And then Piper points to a final plant, asking what it is and what its use is. And Paige is like, oh, that's Angelica. I think it's mostly used to flavor fish. Though according to the Wikipedia, it's actually got medicinal uses. It should be noted, none of these plants are present that I can see. Yeah. Because, goodness knows, I would have seen if there were an aloe plant in that garden. Yeah. Yeah. It's hilarious. There's mostly like, not it's just pretty there's, flowers. There's that, like, there's that like mum ball, like yeah. that, like we have a bunch of them out front in the bush. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's definitely just not pointing flowers. to any anything that is actual anything. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the, this is the best part, right? So, so she says the angelica is mostly used to flavor fish, and then <laughs> Piper, hands in pockets, turns her head to the side. And she's like, she passed with flying colors. Yeah, she got every answer right. I was like, ah, uh, except that she didn't, but okay. So they walk over to Phoebe and Leo, who are sitting on a blanket. Leo is in tan pants and a grayish, greenish button-down shirt. Phoebe is in a long white skirt, like that, floor length. That looked to be like some kind of cotton. Yeah, it also looked like it was a, what I lovingly call a rave skirt, because it had, like, the two wings on the sides that were tied in the back. Yeah. Um, which is very, very mm-hmm. much all of the rage in the early aughts. The the raver type, type outfits. She has paired that with a blue and white striped crop top 
no bra, uh, with her hair pulled back into double buns with flowers as details. And she's got a really cute necklace on that's like a small little beaded flower thing. And the way that she's leaning on this like picnic blanket thing makes her collarbones just pop. Yeah. Like, they are very, very visible because it's this crop top that's off the shoulder. Yeah. And so you just, you get this lovely it's color. It's somewhat the same view. shape as that one orange one from last season. Remember the yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Which means she's definitely not wearing bra. Yeah, no, definitely not. Anyway, Piper is very proud that Paige got every answer right. Leo asks, what inspired the turnaround? And Paige is like, well, you know, I liked the power boost I had in Limbo. I want to get there, so I'll want to work harder, faster. She and Piper sit down and join them. And Phoebe tells Paige not to be in too big of a rush and to, quote, fight like hell to keep life separate from magic, unquote. Well, to keep a life separate from magic. Yes. Anyway, Piper hardly agrees, and Phoebe mentions having a guy like Mason around might not be such a bad thing. Paige says that Mason canceled on her because he said that she was trying too hard and wasn't comfortable in her own skin. But she can take comfort in the fact that he actually canceled on Phoebe and not her. They both laugh, and Phoebe throws a cracker at Paige, which I thought was the cutest thing. Mm -hmm. It was adorable. Yeah, uh, Cole, in the background, uh, shimmers in, like, is, walking. Yeah. He shimmers in while walking, which was a cool effect that we don't was, really see very often. He clearly chose a really good spot for it because it was like in the mostly, shade. It was yeah. it was in the shade, and it was like in a bit of a, a dip in the foliage, so it could he could conceivably have a like walked out from it and be yeah. visible. He is in black pants, a an off white shirt, and a dark tan jacket. Leo is actually the one who notices him first, saying that her trainer from hell is here, which I thought was very funny because it's literal, you know? Yeah. Phoebe jumps up, goes over to Cole. She's about to hug him when he asks who she is. It was really cute. Like, he leans in and he's like, mm, who Wait are a you? second. Who are you? Yeah. She grabs his face and kisses him right, right after, like, scrunching up. Scrunching up her face. Yeah. And we can see the tattoo on her wrist, which they don't normally show us. But it looks like they have literally taped her shirt to her back so as not to show off the back tattoo. Like, double-sided tape. Yeah. Like, it's really funny, and it isn't very noticeable, except that you can tell that the line of the trim of the shirt is puckered just a little bit yeah. right at where her tattoo is. Yeah. It was funny to me, and I had to mm -hmm. mention it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, when when she breaks the kiss, he jokingly says she's Paige. Yeah. She laughs a bit, smacking his chest, and wonders if next they'll be training with lightsabers. Which, again, kind of funny. Yeah. He says in, that he actually just wants to take her on a private picnic of their own. She seems a little confused by this, saying that she needs to be ready for the source. And he's like, you know, yeah, but not today. I know a great picnic spot in the south of France. And how convenient she should be wearing a horizontal blue and white stripe. That's so French. Yeah. Anyway, she she's super excited very by this. excited, yeah. She, they kiss and shimmer out in broad daylight. Yep. And, and we go to the, the end credits. credits. Yeah. Uh, yep. So, episode over. We are on to ratings. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you go first. Have you figured out a number? I'm going to give it a... Five out of ten. Partially pacifist pages. It could have done with way less cultural appropriation. Well, yeah. There there are many things it could have done differently. I am giving it a four out of ten oblivious shopkeeper. That scene drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. And I could not get it out of my brain. Like, I could have gone with, with something cutesy, you know, soul sisters, swapping mm -hmm. sisters. Like, no. Oblivious shopkeeper. Because, like, yeah. I, uh, mm -hmm. I have so many thoughts and I can't put them into words. I am so annoyed. I know. And we don't have time for you to. Exactly. Anyway, so ratings done means we're on to outfits. Um, I really loved Phoebe's final outfit. Yeah. I that, did. That, that was my fave. I didn't mind the orange um, leotard thing. Had it been, like, had the pants been covering 
her hips. Yeah, the the low slung pant thing of the early aughts was not helping this look. Yeah, no. Like if it would have been go a, for a high waist. Yeah, it would have been cute as a top. Go for a mom jean. Mm, I don't know about all that, but it uh, would have been. Please, Alyssa Milano can carry off a mom jean. Yes, but I'm just saying. I I don't know if if I, I'm not a fan of the mom jean as a fashion thing. As long as they're not a light wash, it's fine. Hmm. But I I didn't mind the top itself. The long sleeve with the scoop neck and that color of orange looked really nice on her. It was just that showing the, the hip, the hip yeah. like the exposed hip was just weird. And I think also for me, it was partly, it was the weirdness of being in limbo in that outfit it was just a little weird for me, you mm-hmm. know? And like when she hands, hands the Zen master, the, the knife, the dagger, whatever, like the way she turns is she turns just slightly to show off her hip. As she hands him the dagger. It was just weird. I don't know. Yeah. I, I Maybe I'm reading too much into it. I don't know. But it was just odd to me. Yeah. Anyway. Also, the suspenders that were visibly loose. Yeah. Those bothered me. They also weren't, like, the buckles weren't at the same level. Yeah, see, that didn't bug me at all. Oh, that bugged the hell out of me. No. That, and that I didn't... only watched, like, not a lot of this episode because <laughs> I forgot to. Yeah, no, the... While I have OCD tendencies, things not being symmetrical doesn't really bug me at all. Like, that's that's not how my OCD... Well, it mostly bothered me because, like, the out, fact so. that they were already loose and the buckles weren't at the same level and the one that had it lower meant that that one was looser. So it was just like, they were about to fall off her shoulders. Yeah. For me, it was it was more the the fact that she had suspenders but no bra. Yeah. Like, that's the thing that... that annoyed me more you know you got to keep your pants up but you're not keeping your tits up and yet somehow your tits are still up i have a thing people yeah. with perky boobs man like just mm-hmm. drive me crazy because i've never had perky boobs even when my boobs were tiny yeah you know when i was like seven <laughs> anyway yeah that's going into uncomfortable territory <sighs> hey i was an early bloomer uh anyway now that we're done with that we can go on to social media social things. media stuff as always, so. you can email any questions or comments to charmedchats at gmail.com. You can find all of the links to whatever we mentioned in the episode at charmedchats.com, which is also where you can find the links to our Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, Redbubble, and Patreon pages. And don't forget to join the Discord if you're in Patreon, because we're going to have some new stuff happening there. Yeah. Also... Be sure to give us a rating and review on iTunes if you haven't already, because that helps new people find us. Yes, please. And if you've given us a rating, we love you. Awesome. Come back and give us a review as well, because the reviews help people as well. Yeah. Anyway. So I think that's yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. So until next time, sleep tight. Don't let the warlocks bite. Bye. Bye. Piper, Phoebe and Paige, kicking evil sauce weekly in the swarthy.